All right, hi everyone, we're back with Joe Moran, and we're gonna talk about another exciting horse that's in the My Race Horse universe right now, Caldera, a, a horse who hasn't raced yet, but there's a lot of buzz around this horse, isn't there, Joe? Yeah, there is a, a lot of buzz around him. The barn is very excited, our team is very excited. Uh, he had a big work this morning, and uh, later in the day was entered for his debut uh, at Churchill on Friday, November 1st. So uh, it just made Breeders' Cup even more exciting that uh, on Breeders' Cup Friday, we'll have a big debut per performance, uh, hopefully from Caldera. Yeah. Well, I think what the best thing we could do for, for our audience is to have you watch the workout with us because you were on hand. And why don't we discuss what you see with your, your, your master's eye here and, and break it down for everyone. Would that be cool? You got it. I love it. Joe, were you the person who picked out Caldera as well? Uh, yeah, it was our team uh, at this sale. Uh, myself, Nick Hines, and Brian DiDonato. Um, we were on hand, and uh, he was one that we, we had to bring home. All right, Joe. So we're going to watch his breeze. I'm excited for you to watch this with us because I think it's a great learning experience for all of our viewers. So uh, let's, let's, let's take a peek. All right, there he is. He's the gray horse. And, you know, do you want to explain maybe where he's starting out here? Like, what are they seeing? Is this him warming up? Exactly. So this is the warm up. So we call it backtracking. So they go the wrong direction at a jog pretty much to the finish line. And then you saw him flip around and that's where he'll gallop kind of into his work. And he was working five eights in company today. Um, and this was kind of what I'll say was his serious tune up work to go 59 and change. Um, and we'll see when he comes down the stretch, uh, he was simply playing with his workmate. Um, uh, it's pretty incredible how this horse is able to breeze, how he is and look like he's just galloping. He does it. He has just such a high cruising speed. Um, and from a pedigree aspect, I think he's only going to get better. Uh, the longer he goes, uh, being by Liam's map, uh, out of that tis now mare, you know, you just got to think you know, the classic type distances over time, or, you know, just two turns in general are going to be right up his alley. Um, but the one thing that is so impressive about this horse is even when he gets tested by a horse that comes alongside, you can see uh, the horse to his outside is being asked by that rider to keep up with him. And Jaime Torres, who is aboard uh, Caldera this morning, he doesn't even really move on him. It's almost like he's a statue and you can even see he's standing high in the saddle right now. Uh, where he's not even squeezing down on him, trying to get him to pick up the pace, and he's just doing it all on his own. Um, so it's it's going to be really exciting. I'm just looking forward for the day that he does get battle tested to see really how much he can even run more than what he's shown us in the morning. Because I, I just think at this stage, it's just he's doing it all off raw ability. So talk about what made you like this horse when you went out and found him. Yeah, um, I can actually remember um, this was at the OBS March sale and we had an opportunity. We did a couple um, lotteries for owners to come out and come look at horses for 30 minutes with myself and a few other um, industry professionals. Wesley Ward did it with us, Kieran Dunn, Nick Hines. Um, and I remember I took a group to to see this horse because he was a horse that i just couldn't get out of my mind that day it was uh it was a very tough sale we had gotten shut out on a few horses early on uh in the sale and when we had saw when i had saw this horse you know he was your classic type looking horse he had the scope to him uh and even when you see him in that start of this video when he's jogging by the hip on him and the shape that he's got behind him it, he just has so much power to him um, and sometimes when you think of Liam's map, you may think turf, but he had this dirt look to him and he's had plenty of success as a sire of his offspring on dirt. Uh, and he was a January foal, so he was on the mature side, right? So sometimes at these sales, you got to look through foals that are born in January versus foals that are born in April and May. And you got to be able to, uh, give horses excuses that are a little more immature. So him, you knew kind of what you were getting, that he was a finished product in a way that he was very mature, um, but he was just a beautiful looking animal. Uh, and we had the intention of buying one for Wayne coming off seas, the gray. So we were looking for a big, sturdy, durable looking colt. And he kind of checked all the boxes. 
Um, we were hoping to get him a little cheaper, but we did not. But uh, based off the way he's breezing right now, I don't think we have any issues of what we paid for him. Well, the rumors that, you know, have been circulating is this could be a triple crown trail horse. This could, you know, uh, is that is that how you see it, Joe? Is that what the goal is with this guy for the beginning of his career? Well, it's certainly very early to 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 think that, but we're always dreaming in this game. And the way he's working, he's a cult. The timing is perfect. I, the one thing I'll say, this game, timing is everything. And everyone, when you buy a horse, you want them to run early. It's like, I want this horse to run, but I can't see a better timeline than this horse starting his career in November, that if he's able to take himself to that next step, that the timing to get there and the length that he'll have to be in training, in my opinion, could be the biggest blessing in disguise. He was a horse that when we bought, we had to give him some time off. Um, and we do that pretty much with all of our horses regardless, but he needed 30 days off. Um, he ended up getting 60 days off. He went into training with Dave Scanlon, who we purchased him off of, uh, and he had a lot of work. So you'll notice like a big difference between this horse and improbable luck, for example, is that this horse had a good amount of works on the farm before he came into the track. And when Caldera worked at the track, his first work was a half mile and 46 and change. And not that it was surprising, but we knew he would probably be working a half mile. But, uh, you know, he came into the track at a much different fitness level than improbable luck, for example. So they're at such a different rate uh, or different uh, period of their training when they first entered Churchill Downs with D-Wayne. Um, but this horse, he's just done everything so easy. Wayne, you know, kind of half jokingly, half serious said, Let's win our debut and then we'll be in the Southwest at Oakland Park. And, you know, as we were kind of joking around before the show, he has nothing to gain by saying something like that. I sure hope he's right. Um, and it would be a fun three-year-old campaign for this horse. There's going to be so many opportunities. Uh, and as I said, you know, the moment his debut is going to be at six furlongs, he's shown enough speed. He was quick out of the gate. Uh, but as this horse goes longer, I think we're just going to see even a better version of himself. Wow, Joe. Well, that's very exciting. And you said he's going to be starting on uh, the Friday, the Breeders' Cup, correct? Friday, uh, November 1st, he'll be running at Churchill. Breeders' Cup will be at Del Mar, but uh, it will certainly give us a, another rooting factor on Breeders' Cup Friday. Well, I thought this could be a good opportunity to discuss, you know, when Hope Springs Eternal in this game, you, you, you get excited. There's a buzz about a horse and then the debut happens. And in racing, look, the odds of getting to the racetrack, you've beaten all the odds, right? To win a race, even at the lowest level, I'm talking about the lowest level claiming, it, it's like a miracle in itself. It's so many things can go wrong. Um, Joe, I think a lot of people have a tendency to, they can panic. Oh my, I, he was so hyped, he lost. You know, why don't we discuss this right now? Like, what do you expect to see? And if, if we all want him to win or, you know, but there's more factors than that that go into a race. What, would you mind talking about it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I love this question. I think it's probably one of the most educational moments. Um, you know, there's so much hype around this horse and he's showing so much ability that, he certainly looks like he is a horse that can win on debut. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I use Seize the Gray as a prime example. His debut, uh, granted, Caldera probably has a little more fitness under him and preparation going into his debut. But Seize the Gray, I believe he was beaten over 20 lengths in his first start and then came back to win uh, at Saratoga. And the rest is history from there. But, you know, it's kind of a, a funny saying that we use – and racing, but winning on debut is a blessing and a curse, right? It's you're now so excited, but that jump right into winners or going into stakes competition, especially this time of year, you're usually having to take a significant class jump, uh, or now you're going to have to go against winners and change distances all in your second start. And so much is thrown at a horse that sometimes it becomes too much in that second start. Uh, and we always say running second by a nose in their debut is like the perfect situation that you get a good run. It allows them to come back against maidens their second time. And the next thing you know, and start number three, they can stretch out. They have two races of experience. Um, but the moral of this is that do not panic if this horse does not win on debut. Uh, you know, as I was kind of saying in his workout uh, video and describing you know, his physical attributes and what we think he's going to be best at. 
we have so much more hope than just a six furlong maiden special weight on debut. Uh, and his trainer, when you look, D. Wayne Lucas, he is not notoriously known to win on debut. And over the last few years, there's only a handful um, that have won on debut for him. So uh, this first race, as much as he has the ability and, and he might just win off the screen off for ability, if he doesn't, the next time out, we know uh, the coach is going to have him even more cranked up and he's going to have that race experience under him. Uh, and I'll certainly be still supporting him uh, well after that debut, regardless of what happens. Wow. Well, this is very exciting. And Joe, we want to thank you for your time. We're excited for Caldera and uh, we, we look forward to the future with him and a lot more My Race Horses. Thank you so much for doing this with us, Joe. No, it was a pleasure. Uh, always love talking about the stable and hope to do it more often.